Adding quality piano in Reason is pretty simple. Open a combinator, name it piano, or piani if you're feeling like a hillbilly, and using the browse patch button, go to Reason Factory Sound Bank, Combinator Patches, Piano and Keyboard, Acoustic Piano, and we've got a few choices here. I'll choose Concert Grand Piano because that's the one I like. And if I didn't choose the one I'd like, I'd have some serious problems. If we have a look inside, we've got several things going on. The NNXT instance generates the sounds, and this goes through the EQ into the mixer up here. The chorus and reverb are set up to auxiliary 1 and 2, respectively, giving the piano more thickness and room to the sound. Now, if I add some notes and play it, let's have a listen. Okay, it's sounding cool, but I've got some tricks up my sleeve that should make it sound cooler. First thing is to make it punch a bit harder. When using a sampler to emulate piano, you have to be very careful with velocity or everything will sound like a small child with anger management issues playing it. I'll talk more about this when I discuss the notes, but the main thing to remember is that you can't rely on the velocity to generate the punch if you want more dynamic sounding piano. So instead, we turn to a compressor. So right click, create, M-Class Compressor. Turn the attack down to around 30 milliseconds, something like that, just so it's got a short punch at the start. Turn the input gain up to full, and turn the threshold right down to maybe 24, 25, something like that, decibels. So hear it with, and without. You can hear this punchiness there that you don't get without the compressor. But to bring up the tail end after the punch, so there's a decent sustain as well, we're going to need to maximize it afterwards. So right click, create, M class maximizer. Full input gain and 4 milliseconds look ahead. So let's take a listen to that. Without. And with. Okay, that's a little bit too much. So let's take that output gain down. There we go. Lastly, we want this piano to have some delay, so right-click on the mixer and create DDL1 Digital Delay Line. Turn the feedback to just over a half. The feedback determines how much of the signal you feed back into the digital delay line so that it echoes out more than once. The delay line has automatically been added to cha auxiliary channel 3, as you can see there, since there are already two effects in slots 1 and 2. So turn up aux 3 on channel 1 where the piano is going into, maybe just above halfway and take a listen. Awesome. If that doesn't make people get their hands in the air, then they must be paraplegic. So, let's look at those notes. As I mentioned before, the velocity plays a huge part in determining the piano's tone. If you just put in all the notes on the computer and don't change the velocity, which you can do down here, then it'll sound really unnatural. So I'll show you that now. Like compare how it was sounding to this. There's just no subtlety there whatsoever, but when you've got the subtle velocity changes, take a listen. You can hear, especially near the end here. You've got these really gorgeous, subtle notes going on that you just wouldn't get it with that full velocity sound. So it's much more natural and dynamic sounding with that velocity change. So, the notes themselves. The progression revolves mostly around the C minor third chord here. That pretty note combination that always results in gorgeous music. Then I go to a chord with the B flat below as the loudest note, with the other notes on top, the D and the F, giving some subtle melody to it. This alternation, which I do three times round, sorts out the first three loops of the progression, but then the last loop, it drops here to the G sharp third, which has the root note C in there, but since the G sharp is the focus, it makes it feel more melancholy and unfinished, because bass line is clearly a genre for subtle emotion. And interspersed, you can see there are some random little notes there. 
just to make it a bit more interesting and catchy. We've got this G note, which you can see is there, there, and the high G note, the octave above, give a definite listening point so people can latch onto that piano part clearly over the pad that we'll introduce now in part three. <laughs> 